Good morning and welcome to the Anthony Petiti Organic Gardening Show. Thank you so much for being with us. I cannot believe it is June. Oh my gosh, I just don't know where the year is going. You know, my mother used to say, the older you get, the faster time goes. And it used to really irritate me because I used to think, Mom, that doesn't make any sense at all. But, you know, the older you get, the quicker it seems like time just flies by. And when we're busy, it even seems to go faster. So um, just time is, you know, May is so busy for us and it just seems like May just flies by. So, um, but a lot of things are going on in the gardens and in the lawns and in our landscapes because of so so much rain. And so those are a lot of the questions that we're having this week that we're going to be answering for you today. And uh, we're going to uh, get into getting those questions all answered for you and talk a little bit about what we can be doing to our landscapes and our lawns and our gardens with all of the rain that we're having and some of the issues that we're going to be having because of this. But we're going to go ahead and thank the Lord for our show and the opportunities that he gives us. And so if you'll just assume an attitude of prayer. Father, we just come before you and we thank you for your goodness and your grace. We just thank you for all of the many blessings that you give us, Father. The ones that we forget about on a daily basis. Father, we just come to you at this moment asking you to not just bless our show, but to bless all of our listeners and just give me words that will touch their lives and not just teach them about the beautiful things that you have given us, but help them to remember that all of these things come from you. We just thank you again for your goodness and your graces that you give us every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, we do have all kinds of issues. And even though we are thankful for all of our many blessings, many of us are struggling in our gardens right now um, because of all of the rain that God is giving us. And um, so we have um, issues. And uh, the first off um, we have that we have been um, having several calls in um, at the store about and people stopping in um, is um, issues with the lawn. And um, we have had some several people call about rust. And if you don't have rust, well, that's great. Um, You could have rust and not not know that you have rust. Um, But it's usually due to a wet season. Or if you um, have an area of your lawn that might hold water a little bit, Rust, um, you usually notice um, when you're mowing your grass. And so if you have um, a lawn service that cuts your grass for you um, and you don't spend a lot of time in your lawn, you might not notice that you have rust. Um, But I'm going to tell you how to check and see if you have rust. Put a light colored pair of shoes on and walk through your yard. If you have orange on them when you leave the lawn area, you have rust. Um, And uh, a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, you know, I need to put some type of a fungicide down. They're ready to call a lawn company that does spraying to get some type of a chemical down. And you just need to halt all of that because one extra application of milorganite, a high nitrogen fertilizer, an organic one is going to take care of that for you. An extra dose of nitrogen, just it's amazing how it will kick out that rust. Um, And I'm sure that there are lawn care companies that really doesn't want to hear that from me. Um, If you are one of those uh, guys that are spraying lawns, you probably want me to shut my mouth, I'm sure. But um, that one extra application of fertilization, I guess um, you could have your lawn care company put down for you. A high nitrogen one is going to be best. Um, An organic one is better yet. Um, Or if you have a spreader and you have a lawn care company, you can come and just do this one application yourself. I'm sure they're very busy right now anyhow, dealing with the weeds because of all of the rain that we have been having um, and their weed control um, not um, working quite as well because of that or because they didn't get their pre-emergent down early enough. Um, so um, they're usually pretty busy right now uh, controlling uh, weeds and other issues. So if you did this one application yourself, I'm sure that they're not going to um lose their company because you took an application away from them. Um, But go ahead, get that nitrogen down on your lawn and you will see the rust go away. 
It's not going to promote um, a lot of growth in your lawn, um, but it will um, help green it up even more. And um, the nutrients are probably leaching away quickly because of all the rain that we are having. Remember, um, you don't want to fertilize more than you need to um, because that's going to end up somewhere. Um, That extra nitrogen is not great um, to go down storm sewers. So you want to use only what you need to use. Um, But an organic one is definitely going to be best. So that's going to help that area. Now, some other issues that y'all have been calling in about um, due to the rain, uh, we have noticed fungus already on some things. Powdery mildew on tomatoes um, because of the humidity. Um, And then many people are concerned because of seeing this already, um, that they're worried about blight. Um, Blight, um, this is a little early to see blight. Um, Usually not till about the end of June do we see any blight. Um, But um, you will notice some yellowing of your leaves. That's not blight already. Um, Some people are starting to worry about that, especially those of you that have had blight in the past. You start to see those yellowing leaves at the bottom and you're like all freaking out. Oh, no, I'm getting blight already. Um, But what you're going to want to do is trim off those yellow leaves. Um, I really recommend sanitation being key here. Um, Make sure that you have a little cup of watered down um, hydrogen peroxide. Um, is going to be good. You can dip your pruners or your scissors, whatever you're using to trim off those bottom yellowing leaves. And we're doing this um, sanitation technique just because we're not sure if there could be any spores of a fungus on there already. Um, If there is some powdery mildew because of all the humid and wet weather that we've had, um, you can kill that off by dipping your pruners into your cup of solution um, between every cut. You will eliminate a lot of travel of those spores that could be um, on your pruners. Also remember, and and pay attention to this, when you are trimming, um, and this isn't just your tomatoes, we just are talking about tomatoes right now, but anytime you're trimming any plant that has some disease of some kind on it, your hand that is holding the pruners and the hand that's holding the limb that you're cutting is also touching those spores. So sanitation of your hands is going to be key also so that you're not traveling that spore by your hands or your pruners. So um, getting your hands uh, clean with this um, peroxide solution is going to be good for um, your hands as well while you're going through um, the plant and it's going to help control it from spreading. But get those lower limbs off yellowed ones and even lower ones that still look good because good airflow is always going to help resist any type of these diseases. So if you have had blight in the past um, and you see nothing right now, still trim off those lower limbs off of your tomato plant. That lower area having good airflow and no leaves. If there is spores on the ground and it rains, they don't Uh, bounce back up to those lower leaves then. Also keeping your stem very clean and sanitary is going to be key as well. Um, But less tissue out there for those spores to bounce back up on if there is some rain um, is a good idea. You can also spray the ground um, with a copper fungicide. Um, You know, I love copper fungicide. It is a a great go-to. You don't need to overuse it if you're using... um, good sanitary practices. Um, You're probably going to still need some a little bit later in the season, but spritzing the ground, um, any of those spores that are on the ground that will help control those. And again, good airflow is the best. Remember, don't crowd your tomatoes. A three by three area, that's Get out a yardstick, make a square with it, and plant your tomato in the middle of that spot. And that is how much area that tomato needs um, before there's other plants around it. Um, That way, you're going to have good airflow, um, less chances of getting diseases, and you'll find that things are doing much, much better for you. But powdery mildew is something that we're noticing already. Um, We're noticing it in the greenhouse because of the very warm um, you know, area that's always in the greenhouse and also the humidity level. So we're really watching that. Um, And we use um, neem oil 
and the copper fungicide if it gets too bad. Um, but the neem oil is a good suppressant. Um, just have to watch it that you don't put any neem product on your leaves in the middle of the day when it's sunny. Not that we're getting very many of those right now, but um, if we do, um, you want to make sure that you're not uh, putting neem oil on in the middle of the day um, on a nice hot sunny day um, because it can burn your leaves and you want to make sure that you're not doing that. Now, also because of the moisture that we're having this spring, um, we're, we're going to notice some issues on our viners. So I'm talking about viners as your cucumbers, your squashes, your melons, and your pumpkins. Um, all of those are very prone to getting the powdery mildew, um, having some downy mildew issues. And when we are having moist um, temperature, warm temperatures and moist conditions, um, we do notice that that's worse on our viners especially. So if you are just getting your garden planted right now, this is a good time to really do some um, pre-conditioning so that you don't have some of these issues. Um, I like, um, especially on your viners, um, if you have had some of these issues in the past um, and you're, you have to plant in the same area and you can't move things around in your garden, um, is to um, put your plant in. Um, once it's rooted in for a few days, um, I would um, get some of the garden dust. It works very well as a fungicide and an insecticide. Um, because we are probably going to deal with some insects later on in the season as well. Um, but that's going to help with those um, vine borers that we have um, and get it around the stem of the plant. Also, if you use the garden dust, like I said, it is a fungicide also. So it will help with some of the other issues that we are dealing with, um, the powdery mildew and the downy mildew. Um, but another thing that you can do um, is if your um, area has had this, um, any of these issues in the past, is once your plant is in, sprinkle down some things on the ground like the garden dust and then maybe even putting down um, some wood chips, um, really fine wood chips, or even like um, we have a, a product, actually it's for stalls. Um, it's, it's like a stall dry material, um, but you can sprinkle that down on the ground and that will help um, absorb that moisture that's there. And it will also aid in not letting those spores come up and get onto the leaves. So it's just a little extra precaution that you can do if you are dealing with some of those um, tough issues and you've dealt with them year after year in your garden and you're frustrated. Um, you might want to try something new and this is a great way to do it. Well, here we are halfway through our show. We're going to take a short break and hear from our sponsors because, of course, without our sponsors, we wouldn't be able to bring the show to you each and every week right here at 8 a.m. on the Light 95.9. We'll be right back. <music> 